Mr. Doherty. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Roche. Here. Mr. Murphy. Here. Chairman Lyons. Here. Let the record show that Mrs. Jones and Mr. Kent are absent. Present also is Attorney Randolph and the town manager, Fresher. We have Mr. Kent joining us in a minute here. Yeah. <sighs> but why don't we proceed? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to direct it, Mr. Fasher. Which, which item should we start with first? Well, we can start with the payment, right? Okay, right? And um, Marty Miner is here. We've asked him to be here. He's prepared some documents and information for us. And we'd just like to uh, have him lead us through this. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Good morning. For the record, Marty Miner with Urban Design Kill Day Studios. Uh, happy holidays. Uh, at our, the October meeting, uh, we had discussions on paver bricks and whether they should be included as part of the hardscape or part of considered as part of open space. There was just a, a general discussion on that. And uh, at your request, uh, we reviewed eight jurisdictions around here. Uh, six of the jurisdictions consider it as, just as you would consider uh, asphalt or any kind of hard pavement. Not to be considered as part of open space, it is hard space, you know, impervious. Um, two of the jurisdictions, Palm Beach Gardens and Ocean Ridge, uh, would allow pavers to act as open space if it was part of a recreational facility, uh, like a pool deck. Uh, this is also used, they count that as part of the open space for any tennis courts or any those type of active, um, acti those activities, you know. Try it again. <laughs> Okay, um, but largely also things to uh, consider with this as part of the open space within the town here, we require it to be vegetative, and that helps with the overall drainage of the whole town. I mean, it allows the water to seep in, and we don't have to go with a larger or more advanced drainage system within the roadway systems, because it's, a lot of it's taken care of on the lot. Um, that was the result of our little um, survey. If you have any questions. Well, that was one of the key questions. I wanted to know is what, what's the practice with the yeah. communities? Yeah, and, and we're, we're similar to our practice here. You know, we, we have a little higher open space, 40. A lot of other towns have 35, but some go up to, you know, up to 50. But we're in the in the range with the similar type of communities. Let's say you have a drive that isn't paper, but it's those little pebbles. The those would be considered hardscape. Also. Okay, that's hardscape. Okay. Yeah, and we looked at those kind of things too. Like if you, if you open those kind of things, you know, pavers or pebbles that allow water to drain through, if you can include those as part of open space, then people can really pave over or have a large automobile parking area in the right. lot. That becomes a, a large majority of the lot. Right. <clears throat> you know, with the pebbles, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful look. It's a traditional look here in the town, but it's also very good for uh, drainage. But it's still considered hardscape. It's still considered a hardscape. Yeah, because it looks hardscape. It is hardscape, <laughs> and, and, and the desire for the town also is to put more of the green vegetation. Any more questions? No, so we currently consider it hardscape, and we intend to leave it that way. Is that the conclusion we're reaching? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. uh, do, not do we right. consider paper bricks hardscape? We don't. We don't. Right now. Well, we know. That's a proposal. Oh, that's a proposal. Okay, I'm sorry. That's yeah. sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. So we don't consider paper bricks. We don't consider the pebbles either right now. Correct. Okay. No. Well, this is a significant adjustment then. It would be a, a significant adjustment. I, I believe that it would be for the good. Yeah. Uh, we also have had other 
changes uh, in our code that kind of run in parallel to this concept, and that is that uh, we required previously the first one inch of runoff to be held on site. We are we have we have recommended uh, you the ARPB has that we now align ourselves with South Florida Water Management District, which require it has a little more stringent requirement. So rather than get our residents all bound up with uh, all of these things, it probably would be a good idea to consider some portion of these paper bricks, if not everything, as hardscape, so that they're generating more green space and uh, runoff capabilities throughout the, throughout the lot, wherever they may, residents may choose to put these swells or whatever. I don't know if that makes sense, what I just said. <laughs> now, I think that would be more onerous for the residents because by having yes. a non pervious, mm -hmm. by considering uh, pavers or pebbles as non pervious, that would make it harder to meet the one inch runoff amount. And we'd have to go to more drastic um, measures as far as having swales and that sort of thing to contain the first inch. So, I mean, I just, I'm dissenting um, because I think that pavers and pebbles are viable. For, to contain water, and uh, you know, I, I don't see that we have a problem with people building driveways that are too large and things like that. Um, you know, and it's, I don't know. Um, certainly, I mean, you know, you can make some debate about whether pavers are considered drainage, and I don't know, Marty could probably speak to that a little bit more, but pebbles are certainly to say that, you know, have um, people put in pebble driveway and then say, well, that's not considered drainage and then having to do more aggressive swaling just doesn't make, doesn't make sense. I, I probably didn't make myself clear. What I, what I meant to say and intended to say is that it, there is a recommendation from this ARPB, from the ARPB, to increase the runoff responsibility. Presently, our code says one inch, but we have aligned ourselves with South Florida Water Management, which I believe is three inch. So, and I also believe that the pebbles actually are good possible runoff, but paper bricks uh, are, are not, and that actually my recommendation would be, and I didn't do it here, but that 50% of the paper bricks be counted as hardscape and that pebbles be eliminated from from hardscape. Uh, Rita, your, your comment, if you would, please. I don't have any, really. I mean, I think I've always thought that, that paver bricks should have been counted in hardscape. Bill, can I go back? So, you, so you're, <coughs> you're recommending that the hard, the pavers should, it's a 50%. It's not a, yes. it's not a one for one. Now, whatever that square footage is, um, divided by two. Okay. Right, okay, and the pebbles yeah. are totally eliminated. I, 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 hmm. Pebbles, you know, that's the old way that we used to have driveways that mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. work well. Uh, people have migrated, or my, I can just tell you, they're migrating away from the Chattahoochee Rock Chattahoo. or whatever it is to paver bricks. So, and we are seeing what appears without analyticals, uh, mm -hmm. an increase in paper bricks throughout the lots. So, because by they're not, you know, as far as I can see, they're not hardscape. They're not, they're not tarmac. They're not, you know, they're, they're, there is a um, permeable quality to the, to the. There is uh, a uh, part. Yeah. Uh, so they shouldn't be counted as 100%. They shouldn't be counted as the same. That's as right. That's asphalt. Yeah. Right. That's, that's my right. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite. Their whole front yard and pebble. Um, what are your suggestions? That's a lot. <laughs> it sounds like they could. No, yeah. it sounds like they could, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe pebbles, <clears throat> I thank you for that comment, Pe pebbles should be counted 50% okay. as well. Oh, maybe have some kind of tier approach where the pebbles is some percentage less mm -hmm. than the pavers. Yeah. I think you know, simplify it with just 50% on everything, yeah. pebbles and hardscape. But uh, our favorite here's my only bias, though, is uh, I generally from an aesthetic perspective i think the pebbles are gent more gentle to the 
depression of the property than, uh, in my opinion. So it would seem to me I'd like to see some way to encourage that. Okay, that's a good thought. Could you confine pebbles to the driveway but not to any parking or other areas of the, of the yard? I mean, it is, it is aesthetically pleasing to see the pebbles in the driveway, mm -hmm. but you just, I don't think you want to see pebbles throughout the, the whole parking, front yard, the parking area or the whole front yard. Not that anybody would do that, right? But you know, <laughs> exactly right. Well, you know, generally, I, I'm, I have the view that we can't pr protect against everything. Um, there's always going to be some radical presentation, and ultimately, we, if we see it, don't we have the right to turn it down? No, not after they, not if you don't regulate against it, and there's been an application and it's already in, you can't turn it down unless you... Yeah. Not every use or every permit will come before you. Well, that's true, that's yeah. true. Okay, what's the resolution? I think we have general consensus. It's just yeah. a question of, of what's the remedy. Yeah. And that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not well, there's also a front yard, backyard. Do we mm -hmm. want to go there a little bit or not? Leave that alone. You know, the, the front of the home, which you see, and then there's paved with brick. Some people want to pave with brick their whole backyard. Should that they remember they a couple of these other towns discuss recreation, which I think mm -hmm. might be in the pool or pool back area, yeah, yeah. yeah. um, or walkways to gazebos or whatever it may be. I mean, I think there is a difference between what people can see from the street and how people do their backyards. Mm -hmm. I have a bias towards that too. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that's, but they may, may make it too complex. You have half half counted and then backyards different than front yard. I could really think to get too much information. I'm thinking if you do fifty percent hardscape should with work the paper bricks and perhaps confine the pebbles to the actual drive area, but that might mm -hmm. be what you're looking for. Okay. And not count not count the pebbles as, as hardscape. If they if they're confined to the front drive. Drive. to the confined to the front drive. The front Front drive and parking, because a lot of these big homes have little areas where you can go up and park a few cars, mm -hmm. too, I've noted. Plus, some have entries on the side, so rather than front drive. Right, they might have to write a service entrance and some of them, yeah. But it's interesting, I, the paradox is that I think of a driveway defined by where the pebbles are. I mean, in the front of my house, you just put all the pebbles. That's my driveway. Yeah. And so that's why I get a little confused. You follow my question? Oh, you mean your whole? Yeah, the whole front, I could just say, that's my drive. Right? I mean, it's oh, fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unless you were to, I guess then you'd get into the position of having to find the drive. Right. Well, it's, it's <laughs> oh, good. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hollis to from uh, Bridges Marsh. Um, we see, we're seeing a trend in Palm Beach where people are using pebbles and mulch because of mess up next to the house. There's, and you're seeing it as borders around fountains, the bigger pebbles, remember even. So it, it, it plays a, a funny game here. I mean, they're actually throwing to, to compound they're the putting issue. it in landscaping beds? In beds, yeah. yeah we have it looks nice. Too. In some oh, cases sure it looks nice, good. especially the big pebbles. You know, more river rock type. Oh, okay. uh, also, there's a detail, oh, you've rock. probably seen it, for, we use it more when we use crushed shell stone for driveways, where you actually pour the underlayment, you pour a small two to four inch concrete underlayment, then you build up for the pebbles. Mm -hmm. So they don't go away, so you don't get the sand coming yeah. through them. So, just to That's definitely put a little bit more. <laughs> That's definitely hard safe. So yeah. if you have a detail, but we don't, that's maybe 80 20 there where we use the old detail where it's just compacted soil and then, and then some people really want the cleanliness. They don't want it to spread. They want concrete to hold the pebbles. Yeah. Yeah. Do you sometimes just do a border, a fixed border with the fixed the border with the, with pebbles just the crushed. Um, yeah, or just build it up. Yes. The man underneath the pebble. There's no there, that's no, definitely, no, no, no. It's not, the water's not going anywhere. I mean, it's, it's hard considered. 
it would be considered a hundred percent hard skin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we knew they did that, well, they'd have to tell us that. They'd have to, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And right. I always tell you. <laughs> and I, it's not just on driveways; it's on a lot of other things. You know, it looks one way on paper, mm -hmm. acceptable, and you know, some time later, after approval and build out, uh, you find oh my. Yeah. It is like old Chicago brick considered brick paper for this discussion because they are. Is that what you're hoping for? Is it open yeah. Yeah. And is definitely okay, fine. And is um, that brick put in sand set versus concrete set? Is there any it's, difference? It's the same. Is it? I think the amount of runoff based on the brick is the same whether you put it on concrete or not. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Because I have folks yeah, in my house that the concrete set is, boy, that's serious. The, oh, it is serious. And yes. This, but in around my pool, it's all sand set, and it drains, and it gets the mill, do, you know, the, 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 so it's a totally different application. But, I mean, Palm Beach definitely is the same, no matter what. Okay. Right. They even go so far in Palm Beach as to the grass pave, where you put it four yes. inches, the plastic, mm -hmm. that's non, that's considered non-pervious. Wow. I can't control that. You can't. Uh, no. You don't even know what happens. Yeah, right. I didn't get an answer. I was okay. calling the building official in Palm Beach to see how they okay. treated. Do you know? You know how do they treat uh, paper? I think bricks. And paper bricks are non pervious hmm. Definitely. So they're they're part of the hardscape. In Correct. I mean, in pebbles in pebbles in the landscape over top of you know. Yeah, I think if you're doing a driveway, you're working with four to six inches of buildup. Whereas if you're putting it over, you know, as mulch, it's a different, it's more, it's a lot more decorative. And it is drained faster. But they are getting to the point where they're, Palm Beach, they're looking for it on the CO, you know, just written on there, they want to see it. Uh, but do you think they count pebbles in a drive as hard skin? Definitely. 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 Pebbles? A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Definitely. Okay. Done it in two yeah. projects recently. Whatever, yes. whatever. In other words, whatever the surface is, they consider hard skate. Yes. Okay. If it's not organic, it's hard skate. It's hard skate. Mm -hmm. That's the basic. If it's not a correct, but it says with where you are allowed to use it as a landscape treatment. It's kind of a yeah. It's more of a mulch. We have, and, and it's a vague area in Palm Beach on that because it's something that's just starting to happen more with a little bit more of the quasi. Transitional contemporary look that's going on, you know, a little bit not not it looks traditional, it looks contemporary, and it's kind of floating that line. So people are using it, as I say, around pools, around fountains, kind of in between grass. And let me ask you: if we went to this, it's all hardscape. If we went to that ruling, would it have impacted some of the half the next the last ten or twenty of these? Homes coming through, in your estimation, in would my it, opinion, yes, it yeah. would. So there would have been some architects, but I can't put what I thought there would be some. Your driveways would have gotten smaller. There would have been less people. You know, people architects would have had to tell their clients, "Look, we can't can't do this right." Yeah, you got to pair back here. You got to if you want to have more driveway, you got to cut on, back on, on the rear. smaller lots. I presume. That's where it really, really comes in. in. Yeah. The, the, the right yeah. quarter acre, third acre lots. So right. that's where you feel. Heavy and that's impact. exactly where it's going to come into. So. And that could be a dramatic upsetting of the apple cart to Around here, because you have a lot of yeah. lots you know, in that city. Yes, we do. And in Palm yeah. Beach, you know, we get up north, there's a lot more lots in that. Up on the north end. Up on the north, north end, yeah. Yeah, shows are. Yeah. And one thing we've got to be careful of what we ask for, because if we cause the homeowner to build a much smaller driveway, they put a lot more cars in the street. Mm -hmm. or at least there's the potential of that. Right. I think. I mean, sure, people that park it on the grass and messing it up, you don't want that. I mean, you know, kids. Well, I mean, having cars on the street generally is not great for right. the narrow streets. And I understand why people do it, but I, I think we just have to be careful uh, about that subject. And I don't, I think the concept of treating it as hardscape is, is, is a good idea. Uh, but when we translate it, you know, back to whoever you asked the question, what's the impact? Right. I mean, do we truly know what the impact's going to be vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, a lot of the properties here? Are we are we reducing it in such a substantial way? I don't I don't really know. I, I, I don't know either, and I don't know how I could ever <coughs> come up with that answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I just can speak to it generally. The amount, in my opinion, of paper bricks has been, as it relates to total square footage of the lot, has been increasing, increasing growing, and uh, coupled with that are the pebble, pebble rocks concepts are almost eliminated. Rita, you seem like you want to say something. No, that's exactly well, so, what he said. Oh, okay. That's what's happening. So if, if that's the issue, it would seem to me we want to treat, and it's only a separate discussion, the brick pavers as a, as a different animal than the pebbles. I mean, that's what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that technically maybe it's hardscape, but um, that's not the discussion. So, so count one at 100 and the other at 50%. I mean, that's an idea. That's where you're headed. Yeah. 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 I forgave them and uh, incentivized the architects to maybe put more of the Chattahoochee because it's got a better drainage quality than the pure. And it's and aesthetically more pleasing. It, it is to this group, but maybe not to the group as a whole and the community as a whole. I don't know. But well, well, it is to this group. I agree it is. Yeah. I, have, I like it more than the paper. Well, I think that just listening to everybody's comments, I think that, first of all, I think as Bill points out, you think we should count the pavers instead of as, as full drainage, as 50% drainage, leave the pebbles as as far as the material as being fully permeable. Um, located only in the driveway? Well, I think drive, I, it doesn't matter where the pebbles are. In other words, I think they should, but I think the pebbles have to be counted as hardscape. In other words, somebody couldn't pebble their entire property. In other words, that it, the pebbles would fall under the current limitations. I think that the current limitations that we have seem to work. Um, in other words, as, as far as the ratio of hardscape, open space, and, uh, and perhaps foundation, I think that part works. I think, but unless unless you disagree, but the uh, but I have seen very nice planting. I mean, very nice houses with big driveways, and then there tend to be smaller amounts of green space in the front, but I mean, unless somebody purposely went out to build an ugly house or to do something, you know, vindictive to the town, I think that the current rules certainly, we, I don't think we've ever had an issue where somebody, where we haven't been in agreement with the, with the architects over, um, you know, it's never really come up as a part, I mean, from the whole time that I was on the board before, it never came up as an issue, the percentage of hard space. And that's because we haven't been counting it as hardscape, so mm -hmm. they didn't complain. But by counting the pavers as 50%. Well, they have to be a little more careful in how they apply hardscape. Or mm -hmm. Which I would like to say. I think they have to be a little, a little more careful, especially with the pavers, uh, just for hearing all this. Because if I'm hearing is the trend is that the architects are coming in, they're putting more and more of this stuff down. And you're saying, I've got my hands are, I have nothing to say, I just sit there and listen and say, how about well, it? You see, the, I didn't start this, and it's something that I observed from my <clears throat> predecessors. Uh, and at the time, I had no real qualms about it. Rita noticed it before I did, and even as she noticed it, I didn't have a problem with it. I am now suggesting we need to be a little more cautious and align ourselves with basically some penalty for uh, using too much hardscape, including paper bills. So, the, in other words, it was a policy of approval prior, prior to my tenure. And I observed that and allowed that to continue because would be unfair to others. Now it's time to at least bring it to your attention and have you give us direction. That's what we're no, asking. Well, we don't differentiate between the amount of landscape, open space in the front yard versus the rear yard. Uh, yes, I believe we do. For, uh, isn't it 40 percent? Or is that just overall? Overall. It's overall. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, and I make a statement. In fact, I, I agree with Mr. Thrasher that uh, I, I often walk in the community and I'm looking at some of these issues. And um, some of the good number of the older homes have the pebbles. Yes. 
it's an exception to see any new home uh, with these fiddles. Uh, the Weiss House on Polo was one of the few where on Polo they had the pebbles, then on Hill Street, Mr. Street, oh, no. the middle, yes. uh, and, uh, the back entrance to the, uh, the um, garage is, is papers. Yeah. Um, I think it's That's right. That's right. Um, but generally, uh, it's all papers today. So I think encouraging some of the pebbles again is a good idea. And that's my perspective. Are we in agreement that we would like to <coughs> we would do that by treating it differently than they would the other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just throw something else in here? Because presently it's the fact that pavers and pool decks don't count in open space. So what if someone, like Bob, you said you've got pavers around your voice, someone's got a poor deck where it's, you know, um, got relief in it and that sort of thing, where that's definitely not, uh, that, that, that doesn't drain, where someone's got a poor, are we, we going to say that if you've got a, you know, because that's something we'd have to consider. Is it going to remain not counted? Just pull this? I, I would, presently we have no differentiation between front and back. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, particularly if you want to stay on the cautious side, that uh, you would consider the hardscape in the rear around the pool as 50% as well. And see how that goes for us. Irrespective of its, the material. Because some is going to be, you know, uh, yeah. that's that's definitely going to be hardscape. Yeah. Uh, count of fifty percent. The pool itself is pulled out as hardscape. And, okay. Uh, is you see, a large part of this is uh, kind of a unseen <laughs> situation in, in the Clean Water Act. Uh, the, I believe that the, the initial. Consideration of hardscape versus uh, uh, greenscape, in part, was because of uh, NPDES, the Clean Water Act, and uh, water uh, percolation and, and uh, to filter out whatever fertilizers and stuff from the, from the green area. So, but presently there have I've not observed any new rules, and presently I know our rules. Uh, have passed the test uh, each year as we report our portion of to the NPDES, which is National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. That's why they use an acronym. <laughs> uh, but I, I keep coming back to the idea that it's growing and uh, I'd like to have specific guidance. If, if we, holistically, if we change pavers and make it hardscape. By definition, a lot of properties are going to have a lot more hardscape. I mean, right now, the ones who have pavers, right? Would you say that again, please? Right now, the pavers are not considered hardscape. Right. Uh, if you now take all the properties that have a lot of pavers, the amount of hardscape on the property is going to be much greater. In fact, many of them will probably be over 40%. Well, we, we wouldn't be it would be grandfathered. Yeah. Right. No, 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 yeah. But what, what I'm again trying to understand is, is the forty percent now the right number still after you throw in the brick papers? Uh, you, you it's, it's hard my, to be I mean, precise. It. I think it's going in the right direction. I, I wouldn't know how to. Well, do you, you, you have any concern that by tweaking uh, one aspect? That then all of a sudden this forty percent becomes an unreasonable parameter. <clears throat> no, I I'm don't, not I, suggesting I, it is. I'm just no, asking. No, I, I, I don't. I don't think it will go that far. Okay. I, I think you know the forty is a good solid number and makes really that's the linchpin that makes everything else work. Okay. You know, uh, you raise a point. Uh, although Bill says they'd be grandfather those that have the uh, paper bricks would be grandfathered in. It seems to me if they were to come in for a renovation that they would be penalized when they come in for a renovation because they're adding more hardscape mm -hmm. to the max that they already have. Yeah, say so they added a couple bedrooms and two baths to a home or something, they could make it significant. They may then flunk the test. Yeah. 
Right. Good. Now, the can always ask for a, you know, a, an exception or something. A waiver. Right? A waiver, if, if, of course. If, if yeah. the commission passes the waiver provision as opposed to the variance provision, they can ask for a waiver from mm -hmm. I think the one single number saying that 40% yeah. is the reason why you see Palm Beach and some other jurisdictions possibly, you know, we set the front as a different number because the driveway's there, the motor course there. So anything from the front of the house towards the road has a different percentage. And then the whole property has a percentage. And even in Palm Beach, they go so far as perimeter has to have a percentage of landscape open space. Mm -hmm. But that's why, so if it, you know, you're dealing just with that driveway, you have a different number up front. 45% you know, of your front yard has to be landscape open space. And that's a work in landscape open space versus non-pervious kind of gets you out of this middle ground of, Pebble. hey, my pebbles drain. Right. Or, right. you know. So maybe it's more multi-dimensional than just having one big number for all the time. Well, just as you guys are speaking of it, that's well, made I'm, me think of because I always wondered why Palm Beach, or then there's a couple other jurisdictions, did that. <laughs> you know, had that separate number, and it just maybe that maybe is the reason because the one big number is maybe too encompassing. You have it, but then you set off the front so that you maintain some sort of charm for the front where you want it to feel a certain way. You don't want it to just be blanket. You know, everybody takes all of their open space and puts it in the rear and then pays the front. Pays the front. Yeah. Then we have this interesting thing too. It's like, how do we define the front of the house? Is it, I mean, what, what yeah. is the frontal plane of the house? Yeah. So it's, it could get really complicated. I think. Yeah. And I think that the one thing we have to recognize too is that for smaller lots, having, uh, you know, for a large lot, this really doesn't become an issue, but for smaller lots, it becomes an issue. And, and you know, in a smaller, a smaller lot, having a lot of firescape in front doesn't look so, so bad. Especially, I mean, if it's, if it's softened with appropriate planting materials from the outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's the. Uh, I mean, there is a house in the long Gulf Stream Road, all the way down to the far end, the greenhouse that had the second story was added on to. It's three houses in on the west side, and there's a lot of hardscape in the front, but and there's a wall in the front, too. This is, I don't know, camera But there's a lot of hardscape, but it's still, it's still pleasing to the eye. Typically, the, the front yard percentage is from the setback. To the property line, do you have any to, property to the right way, whichever way you want to do it. Not from necessarily the front, but front of the house. But say you had a non-conforming house and it pushed into the front setback. Obviously, part of that house would be considered hardscape. You have to measure it as hardscape. Help me read that. It, it appears. Uh, I'm thinking. Thank you. For that. Did we not in? Uh, earlier discussions and earlier recommendation define the front of the house differently than what was just mentioned from the setback towards the street or whatever property line. Didn't we define the front of the house to be the front plane going forward or something of that nature? It had to do with the gates and the landscaping and so that I think we did over and off the way for the fence. Yeah. Mm. But did we create a definition overall? Consistent. I'm not sure it's in there. It's still no, a proposal. I, no. I think it is still in a proposal. Yeah, I got a phone each time. They, they, uh, don't, they don't allow pedals or. Yeah. Can I put you on speaker? You'll be at a public meeting if I do. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay with you? All right, we're having. All right, just a second. Um, gentlemen, I have the uh, building zoning director and the zoning director on the line and in Palm Beach, and uh, Paul and JP were discussing um, whether to allow pavers or pebbles to be counted as different than than hardscape, either fifty percent or. Uh, I mean, we were just trying to figure out how how we deal with it in Palm Beach.
So it's all it's, it's all hardscape. yards uh, different than rear yards as far as the required landscape to open space? It's hardscape, yeah. 100%. Even even the, the brick where you grow grass in it, it's right. supposed right. to be right. Yeah. Yeah. If it's, if it's uh, compacted for as a service for driving, it's counted as, mm -hmm. as hardscape. That's probably good. I, well, I may well, not well, like that. Not just driving, but lounging around a pool. Anything. And walking on a pathway. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you're having a basketball court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, clay, clay tennis courts as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. We've run into that too, one time. Oh yeah. We have an existing definition of the front yard. Uh, shall mean the open space extending the full width of the lot, the depth of which is the minimum horizontal distance between the front lot line and the nearest line of the principal building. And the same thing applies to the side yard. Good, thank you. So that's covered. Okay. So I, I think, based on the data points we've heard so far, uh, do we want to consider any distinction between pebbles and brick papers? I mean, I think we need to decide whether we want to do that or not. I think there are two issues. One, whether it's considered hardscape or not, or green space. And, well, the, second yes, is, yes. and the second is as far as drainage goes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Aesthetically versus, you know, the, the functionality. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's stay with the aesthetics for a moment. Um, do we want to treat the two any differently? Hardscape versus landscape? Treat the two materials, the pavers and the pebbles, differently. Different. Yeah, I mean, I would. That's just one my yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the sense to incentivize more of the pebbles yeah. at the theory than the, the brick. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is not what Palm Beach does. Right. Uh, but, you know, Palm Beach is Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm in favor of, of showing some distinction as well. I want to encourage the, uh, the pebbles. I can go with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. sounds reasonable to me. No, we only count them like half. Well, well I don't know what the, I don't know what the, I don't, we don't know what the factor is yet. But at least I have a, because I, what I'm inclined, if everyone agrees, that we sort of establish the general parameters of this discussion, and then Mr. Thrasher, you come back and put it in some verbiage that tries to accomplish what we're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, You're that, listening, aren't you, Mike? Yes. <laughs> uh, is, is, that, is that a good process? Do you believe that's a good way to go? Can you say it one more time? Well, I establish the general parameters. Yes. For example, we just, uh, we're having a discussion, do we treat uh, pavers differently from pebbles? If the consensus is yes, then that's one parameter, um, et cetera, and we'll continue on this yeah. discussion, and then you can put it into some language that we can I'd be happy to. examine. Tom, do you so, like that approach? Or? Yeah, I think we should separate. Does that? Maybe no Palm Beach does, and I think we should. So would you treat uh, pavers uh, as 100% hardscape and pebbles as either zero? Or 50 percent, or did you want to allow pavers 50? It doesn't mm -hmm. seem to me you allow ought to allow pavers 50 percent. Pavers are pretty hard. Pavers are pavers. Yes, it's just a decorative hard so drive. They're going to count as 100 percent. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. 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 And then sure. 50 for the or a number like that for the pebbles. <clears throat> that's a that's a meaningful uh, bias, if you will, or incentive or incentive for things for pebbles. Will the architects be able to manipulate this? I mean, do you see like, oh gosh, I gotta really get around that? Never. I don't think so. Okay, that's that pretty black and white. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Okay, yeah. what do you what do you think of this? Uh, I think this is the right way to go. Okay, it, it feels it feels good. It feels right. correct. Yeah. I think you will end up with a little larger, possibly, uh, areas of you know for vehicle. Storage parking, if you're, you know, you're counting 50 percent. In pebbles, you mean? Yeah, you're with the pebbles. bigger parking area. You're encouraging pebbles, which right. is good, mm -hmm. but you may end up with a little larger driveway. Yeah, people would take away paths and put it into a parking area. Right. It, it, but that's that's what I'm wondering about how they're gonna. Yeah. yeah. You know, and a lot of times that's not necessarily the architect driving that; it's the client saying, "I need to put another car on here," and then you say, "Well." Then this path back to your little sitting area. Most of the time, it's like, oh, right. Okay, okay. Well, it's never going to be perfect. It's no. Not. <laughs> it's not perfect. We prove that every day. <laughs> well, we haven't really had a problem, have we? Or no, no well, I, we, we, we see one more potentially coming, Bill. I mean, the, 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 well, we haven't had a problem because we haven't enforced it in this okay. manner. Okay. So there would be no reason for me to object in a pre app or any other place. Uh, your hardscape calculations uh, should include paper bricks. When I start getting into those discussions, it becomes very clear and is able to uh, to be managed. But that's that's what I'm saying. It's not a problem because it's not really been regulated, and we we have regulated it based on the, our code and based on the assumption that paper bricks are not hardscape. I think that needs to change. I agree. Yeah, I would say generally, and this is one person's impression, if you walk through the core, and, uh, and I have this site that I'm just talking about the core, th there is a sense of more hardscape, oh, in yeah. my opinion. Oh, yeah. um, and, and so, working towards, and if you look at the pebbles as something that is still hardscape, but not as significant an impact as a paper, I think we're moving in the right direction. Let's go around the table. Do you want any, any other comments? No, I just think that, that well, as far as the, the appearance, in other words, in considering a hardscape or green space, I think that we're pretty much all in favor of staying with the same uh, rule. In other words, not, not saying front, back, differentiating all of that, not doing the tent, going right. around the outside. I think that we're all on the same mm -hmm. page. And encourage pavers, I think that's a very reasonable I, uh, approach to take. And the, uh, because we just haven't had an issue. And you know, I almost feel as though we should put in some allowance for, the, for how 
houses um, on smaller lots because, you know, I mean, we do need to keep, I mean, there is one house that's along uh, Polo Drive where the houses, where the cars are always in the street because they just have one narrow brick pathway going up to a, uh, to a, uh, mm -hmm. the cars. Yes. Okay, um, right, right, right. That's, that's, all, that's been there for yeah. Yeah. But I mean, they really prefer, and I think that most people, I mean, people don't come to Gulfstream to build, uh, you know, it's the landscaping and the feel of the lushness of the town yeah. that attracts people here. And it's Absolutely. I mean, one of the things, but. Mm -hmm. I, I, in hearing what you say, I'm not sure you all are on the same page because you said something about encouraging favors. This would just no, no, that was his mistake. He, he did say, but I, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was good catch. Right. Right. Sorry, sorry, I meant pebbles. Right. Sorry, right. sorry that this right. is where so I was going. Was, was we're going to count 100% of papers, papers into a hardscape calculation, right? That's what we're talking about, 100% of that. Mm -hmm. And we're saying, let's just say um, if you use the pebbles, we'll only we'll discount it in half. They can do 50%. We're giving them that little incentive, and I think that's where we're all kind of voting. We're just talking about the whole yard, we're not talking front yard, backyard, ten foot, but just the whole calculations, simplifying it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah. And everything, it's it's not driveway versus patio, it's just a calculation. If it's hard, it's a paver, it's counted 100%, if it's pebble, we count it 50%. Is that right? I, yeah, I have mm -hmm. one. Unless unless it's underlying, unless it's a concrete underlayment. Yeah, that, yeah that's, right. the, that's, that's, right. Right. that's what Marty needs to write. Yeah. There's a concrete yeah. underlayment. But I think the one thing we, we have to, I mean, concrete driveways, there was where the new house is going up at the end of Lakeview. So on Polo Drive, at the end of Lakeview, there's a new two story house going up. I don't know. But Polo goes, uh, Polo Lakeview. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And it had a concrete driveway, and it just was the most, I mean, it was the one driveway that just really looked horrible. I mean, just to, I mean, I would almost say we want to eliminate concrete driveway. Now, mm -hmm. that's difficult because there are, there are decorative concrete, yes. mm -hmm. and that's a whole different thing, but just, it was just concrete poured, and it just was, it was great to skateboard on, but it was right. the rest of it. Right. <laughs> well, that begs the question, is asphalt out the door, right, or is that? Asphalt is, is hard. I, I don't get it, used it, it, but it is hard skin. Right. Yeah, but okay. But we, we don't say you can't use asphalt. It's something maybe we should consider because that's, you know, really old fashioned. And I, I'm, it well, is, but who, I don't know if. But we have asphalt drivers, right? like the, yeah. the house that just sold um, on the corner. I know, but they've been, they're older homes, I presume. Yeah, the older homes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, okay. Yeah. Wait, what so, about Palm Beach? Do they have any prohibition on concrete and asphalt? No. 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 Interesting. Now you're starting to get into yeah. talking about materials. Yeah, you know, no, I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we would. Well, yeah, well they are hardscape, but we already know they are. Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, I think that, uh, Marty, you uh, understand what we. Yes, I do. Any other discussion? Um, I think the only part we have to discuss is, is um, how we count it as far as um, permeability. That was the part. That was, that was the part second. Two. That was the part two, is how right. we how we uh, count it, and because right now we we count um, pavers and Chattahoochee or pebbles as being completely permeable, and I think that Bill that was Bill's concern about how we I think he was saying maybe go 100 percent permeability on the pebbles, but then 50 percent permeability on the pavers, or is that not? I, I'm not. I'm missing something, I guess, because I don't see that that, that seems that like we've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish by just this discussion. That the permeability will be part and parcel of that language. Right. Is that they, right? They, they have to be able to show through their engineer that they are capable of maintaining one certain inch. one inch on the property. So however the engineer inch. does that through permeability of pebbles or whatever. We won't regulate that. He'll, he'll just compute that. We don't have to. Okay, so that's not it. It's part of the drainage plan. Right. It's part of the, so we're not changing that part of it. Yes, yes. There is a, a recommendation yeah. to change that. To change that's that. what I was trying to yeah, let you know. You, you, you've made it stricter uh, and more requirement for green space, so. But it's not going to change the permeability aspect. Of no, it will right. not. No. It's just the aesthetics. Right. Exactly. Like the rate itself is right. going to increase from one inch to three. Right. Good. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion so that 
recommendation? Oh. <laughs> or are we going to wait? Marty to come back Draft to something. Draft and then we'll it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I think the next one is entry features. Yeah. Is that why you're sure. here? <laughs> <laughs> I was just sent to listen. <laughs> Mr. Thrasher, I've been how would you want me to see with this oh, question? Well, and that is a good one. I I will start by saying that Mr. Uh, Miner has provided a recommended change to our, our code as it relates to entry feature heights. And I also sent out to you a document that changed that language, or recommended change that language slightly. Martin, you may not be aware of it. Yeah, I saw that, yes. You did see it? Yeah, okay. and I'm in agreement with it. Uh, this this has been discussed at a, at a uh, ARPB meeting already as to just what is a, an entry feature. And it has gone all over the place. Uh, and um, I know that the discussions, and bear with me, I'm not an architect, uh, the, the, the term entablature was used with uh, cornices and all these other things. And in my review, I felt that it would be easier to define an entry feature to include entablatures. And with the standard industry definition of an entablature and its components. And so that where columns and piers uh, are utilized and an entry door is seen that the top of that entablature would be included in the overall height of the entry feature. In we say other features. I apologize. I don't have my do you have my document that I sent out? Yes, one yeah. Right. I thought yeah. I had it. This one. Yeah. Uh, I but I made a couple I've of two. I I was left here. A couple of recommendations. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to to change the definition to include, and I think that's important. Uh, entry features on the front are the front portion of the structure which provide door entrance to the dwelling. The height of the entry feature is measured from the finished floor elevation to the upper portion of any balcony, railing, such gable, entablature, or other such elements. And I think that's that includes just about everything that we, we have seen here. Uh, in, in reviews, and uh, one could argue, well, that that height, that entry feature height, is arbitrary. Uh, you know, let the uh, artist do his thing with the entry feature and how it appears, and uh, don't get so arbitrary in, in just defining a height. The problem that, I, and I think you heard that at the last meeting, uh, that the challenge that I see in that is that just about everything in our code could be argued as arbitrary square footage, FAR, setbacks, and so on. So it is my recollection and understanding of our history that overall, and I think you, you are a very strong proponent of that, that entry feature heights, the E heights, the roof heights, uh, uh, the E heights, we were trying to maintain limits on, on that. And so applications that we have seen here uh, have begun, in my opinion, to exclude uh, certain elements of an entry feature from the measurement. And I think that uh, that may be all right to you and to our community. Uh, it, it also could open the door to uh, a larger, more overstated appearance of, of the home. So, uh, it is my recommendation that we include entablatures in the definition of such. 
as part of the uh, picture and to be measured from the finished floor. If I could be specific on one that you have seen, uh, the difference was a uh, foot and one inch. Uh, it, if you included the end tablature, it would have been too high. Is that the wings? I didn't want to. I don't no, know. No, just a recent. Yeah, yeah just okay. a recent one. Okay. 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 Well, I think now, Skip. I mean, we have very specific, besides the, besides the, you know, how tall a, a, an entry feature can be, you know, in the, in the verbiage, it's, it says, uh, yet should not overpower uh, the remainder of the structure, the portion of the entry feature should be consistent with the rest of the structure, varying just enough to provide a focal point to the front of the house. Well, I think that's, I think we're all in complete agreement with that. The problem becomes is how do you enforce it? In other words, how do you make parameters that keep the uh, the consistency with the rest of the structure varying just enough to provide a focal point? I mean, that's really the the big problem that we're having. Is and how do you how do you define an entry feature? You know, and do you limit it by height? But what about width? I mean, we have there's a house on on Polo that has a very sort of Grecian looking has you know, columns, columns on the second story above the garage, and then this um, gabled um, end with four big columns, which completely overpowers the house. It's in no way in keeping with the, mm -hmm. and I just remember it being a very contentious issue when the, uh, there was a remodel came up before the board. But is how do, how do we keep, and that's where, I mean, can we say as a, as a group, well, that it's too overpowering? That is, that is, I mean, yeah, I mean, then I can say, well, you know, define overpowering. Well, I think that's what uh, I'm trying to do is to get more specific language to assist you in, in that because the, the term overpowering may allow a lot of discretion. Someone might complain about and think, an architect may not think it's overpowering, but three, three or four of you mm -hmm. out of the group might think it is. So. Um, I, I think we're trying to get, be more specific. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's the tension, in my opinion. Uh, from it, it, from here are the advantages of having a quantitative criteria. Um, homeowner comes in, architect comes to looks at the building code, speaks to the Frasher reader, um, and has a clear set of quantitative guidelines. No questions, right? It's, as long as you, you know, yes. got enough verbiage, right? Yeah. Um, that's great. But are we going to exclude, preclude, some entry features that could really complement the building mm -hmm. that might not fit these quantitative criteria? And that's the tension I see, and I don't know what the right answer is. Um, I, I think about um, the operation of Palm Beach. They don't, you know, it's all discretion, right? Mostly discretion, a lot of discretion, right? Mm, well, not so much. No? They have an architectural review commission that has specific criteria within it. And some of those criteria are whether or not the, the massing and the design fit in with the neighborhood. They also have language which says it shall not be excessively similar or excessively dissimilar <laughs> to other properties within 200 feet, etc. So they do uh, use a, a good bit of discretion in looking at design. And if they see an entry feature that is out of proportion with the rest of the house, right. they will suggest to the architect that they go back to the drawing board in regard to the entry feature. And you've seen that kind of thing happen. More definitely. More yeah. Recently. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your, Mr. Thrasher, you know, what's, what's your view about that? I mean, if we allow for that kind of dialogue, you think that's a, that's a bad thing? No, I don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, um, but the, the difference here in Gulfstream and other architectural review boards is you've got a Gulfstream design manual, which is very specific and intended to tell architects and homeowners specifically what they can do. 
whereas that is not the type of thing that exists in, in other jurisdictions. Sometimes there's complaints that by having a specific design manual, you're, you're encouraging cookie cutter homes as opposed to allowing the discretion to, to look at it. So I think there is some advantage to, even though it, it, it doesn't fall in line with the way you constructed your design manual in the past, I think there is some uh, merit to allowing you to look at it and make a determination as to whether or not the front entryway is, is not in conformity to the rest of the house or to the windows, etc. Maybe our architect has something to say. Yeah, that's where <clears throat> design manuals, math, all these things, you know, what it comes down to is your is eye, right? When you're drawing or sketching or laying out a building, it comes down to how it, con the content of that building. Now, it's used to dissimilar versus di dissimilar as context along the street. And I think if you're using your eye, you can see a project that you say, whoa, that doesn't feel right. And I think anyone really can. And going back to the measuring height, giving a, if Palm Beach doesn't do an entry feature situation at all. If it's a one story project, you're limited to one story. If you're a two story project, you're limited to two story. And if you have a two story project and you come in with a huge two, with a two story entry that follows all the criteria and let's say, I'm trying to think of one, the old Kennedy house. <clears throat> two story entry portico that sticks off of the, the house. The columns are way too attenuated. No one would allow that right now. Richard Sammons, anyone on that board would not allow that project to go through. Because uh, it just doesn't look right within itself. And that's where you can, I think you can use your eye to, to figure these things out. Because if, I, if I'm doing a one story house here in Gulfstream, I'm not going to do, I'm still limited to the eave height of 12 and a half, or I don't remember what it is. 12 and 14. In, in that range, that, yeah. I'm still limited to that. I can't go and make my entry feature higher than that. I, I'm not sure that's true. Um, and you, well, I wouldn't want to. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, that, and, that, 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 and let's stop there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's exactly what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because not all architects are made from the same pool of cloth. No, no. And for me to tell one one thing and another another is pure, pure chaos. And if they were all the same quality or the same, not quality, they were all the same, just the only one architect, no problem here. But I got to tell you that there are different architects out there with different direction and just how far they will allow their client to direct them and as it relates to compromising their design. And that's my problem. And that's, well, that's the tension between a discretionary yes. board and an exact uh, yes. guidelines which are exact. Can I say something while he's there? Marty sent out this, do you guys visit this picture here with the yes. 12, 14, right. 16, 18? I can clearly look at that, I'm a real layman, and tell you which of the four that I would think find acceptable. Probably the 12 and the 14 look okay just from the eye, and 16 and 18 probably don't. But then I said, what happens if you, if it were the same height building, but you locked yeah. off the end? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just to show and you yeah. suddenly yeah. have the building that's half yeah. that mass, <laughs> you know, <laughs> side to side, you know, then, then maybe even the 14 foot one may look like too much. So it's, it's not just the height, it's the proportion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and, and you've heard proportion is very important very. to architects. Yeah, even on, on that project, yeah. which is our project, right. so... Oh, we were supposed to No, 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 you're not, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> take off, let's say we take that house and make it more Bermuda. Now, it's going to be way out of scale for Bermuda, but let's make it Bermuda. Where are you going to measure that entry feature, feature to? Yeah. Right? But I'm meeting the two-story mm -hmm. overall height. So it's kind of, if I strip all that off and it's not this, you know, classical is more Bermuda style, then you've got, then again, you're playing with proportion again. You're not really going with an exact number. And proportion, again, it can, could be arbitrary in somebody's eye. We don't deal yeah. with proportion. No. Mm -hmm. no. no. That's no. a problem. 
It could be arbitrary, but it's not. <laughs> to you, it's not. To you, it's not. <laughs> simply pass it on to the to the board. If you didn't have any guideline in regard to an entry feature and you relied simply on the board to determine whether or not that was overpowering for the house, because he's not an architect and he's not going to be able to look at that and be able to determine. He might think it's overpowering in his view, but uh, without a specific criteria, he wouldn't be able to tell. So oh, yeah, I think we should keep, that's what I'm saying, we should keep all the specific criteria just so we can say, well, look, here you don't need this, I mean, with everything else, eve, height, massing, everything. Well, but just, but in other words, allow him, you know, if it does fall within the guidelines of the, of the, of the book, in other words, prohibited. Oh, and you mean allow the, him to go, to well, say, go he wouldn't pass it on to the board if, if yeah, it didn't right. meet the guidelines. I would, but right. no, no, very, so it has to first right. get through the guidelines, but then the problem is somebody could come up in with a very, with the, something that meets the guidelines, but doesn't meet the aesthetic qualities. And that's and where I rely on the board. On the, on the board, but I mean. Yeah, but that doesn't take the pressure off. That doesn't create a solution for this, this guideline. Yes. One, one, one question, the, the very, let me excuse me, the waiver process that's being considered, would that fall under? Could be. Yeah. Because that would provide Mr. Thrasher with the guidance that Here's our standards. If you don't fall into that, you can't ask for a waiver, but you're subject to the what happens to the board. But if you stay within these guidelines, we would be happy to recommend approval and move on. And that puts the onus back on the architect or the applicant to make the pitch to you why this, even though it may not line up specifically with that, it is a better, better design. It, he doesn't have to make that pitch. You, you know, that person also has an alternative. He can always fall back mm -hmm. if the pitch doesn't go through. It doesn't, you know, without that, without some sort of guidelines, Bill just passes everything on to you, and the applicant loses a month, couple months, getting to, you, you know, your process. The plans get processed, and it gets through you, rather than knowing right at the first meeting with Bill where they stand. And so they can make a, a, a you know, a, it's, a, it's a, essentially it's a business decision of how much risk you're willing to take. 
you know, it's like, I can get that entry feature I want, but I need to get past the board. Marty, I, I, I like that attitude or yeah. uh, that approach. Um, but the way it's constructed right now, we would say any for a uh, one story home, entry feature greater than 14 feet is prohibited. Mm -hmm. Prohibited is a very difficult variance to get through. This would be a waiver. Yeah, uh, which is uh, a little uh, different we'll than. See, now, that's because I, I. That's that was the bit. difference. I. I suppose that we should have advanced the perhaps discussion on waivers to the commission because, I'm not sure, we, how do we how are we, to be assured that that will be the direction of the commission we can at this point in time, so. No, but it's the recommendation from this board to the commission it is. that they allow waivers. Yes. Yes, yes. So the your statement is go ahead and keep the specific guidelines, but allow someone so the bill has room within which to work. Right. Say yes or no. Has parameters. The burden to work on with. the applicant to apply for a waiver before the board. To what? say that this design is superior than the parameters within the code. Now remind me, uh, the, the level of, on a waiver, uh, what, what are the thresholds that have to be uh, accomplished? I, I, I know it's more flexible than a, a variance, but what, what are the... Variances, you wouldn't give a, vari uh, a waiver for things like setbacks and right. lot coverage and right. that sort of thing. But for design guidelines <coughs> where they're prohibited or discouraged, they would have an opportunity, Bill, I have, correct me if I'm wrong, that they would have an opportunity for, to apply for a waiver from those design guys. But, and, but yeah. the thresholds of... Um, there are some thresholds. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I'm trying to remember, because if, if, uh, if the benchmark is too high, then... Uh, no, there, it's not too high. I can just remember okay. that okay. it's not too uh, high. I'll, I'll accept that, because I, I thought the waiver concept was right. I like it. I just don't remember what the detail was. Yeah, I think it would be important to read that, read those criteria, if he if, if allows time to find it. Is, did anybody bring their notes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can miss it. Uh, Roach must Here, be. Wait, maybe I have to. Criteria for allowing waivers is as follows. One. Mr. Roach actually told me in advance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought he was getting ready to give me. I get that a lot from my wife, you know. <laughs> um, criteria for allowing waivers mm -hmm. are as follows. One, granting the waiver will not cause substantial injury to the value of other property in the neighborhood where it is to be located. Okay. Two, the waiver, if granted, will be compatible with the adjoining, adjoining development and the intended purpose of the district in which it is to be located. Three, the waiver, if granted, will be compatible with other design elements of the structure, or the waiver, if granted, will not do an injustice to the integrity of the design guidelines within the district, and five, the waiver, if granted, is meritorious to the town because of its general appearance and adherence to the majority of the design elements within the structure. I believe that's your language, Mr. Right. <clears throat> I, I, I think it's a nice solution. Yeah. I like this. So in this then discussion, we are would establish the height of the entry feature in its definition. Is that correct? Yeah. So you want to so to adopt the, the, the what you put together as far as the uh, no, no. Uh, I, I want to Rebid. adopt what Marty created <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. with the with the red line with the, with the addition line. of the with definition the of in okay. right. All right. Let, let me start right. I, I think that um, you, know, you raised um, a, a number of issues. Uh, Mr. Thrasher's addressed you raised a number of issues. And I think that the solution that's being proposed um, leads to the following uh, outcome. The homeowner is put on notice, if you will, what's likely to be approved and what's unlikely to be approved. But and so they take the necessary risk if they choose. They want to push beyond those parameters, but they need the waiver option to make their case 
before this board and before the town commission. I, mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a good solution, in my opinion. But like that. that's one view. Tom? Huh? Yes, I agree. I like that. I like it. And that implies that you consider what has been proposed reasonable from, uh, for the first step for Mr. Yes. From Mitt and yes. one of his review. This yes. is the red line. So yes, yes. Exactly. But would would let me ask you a question. Would the recent applicant been approved? No, no. no. Sorry. So that, so that had been, it would not have even been advanced. It wouldn't even have been advanced, okay. So that would have been a definitive. Correct. And actually. But they would have had an opportunity to put a waiver if that would have been. I, I, I hear you. I just, <clears throat> so Bill is still the, 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 the first gate that they have to yeah. go through. And at that point, it's either yes or, guys, this doesn't, but you could apply to the board for a waiver. I actually, there, there are, it's not part of this discussion, but I'll just keep you informed. There are two things that happen when I find something in variance, if I believe it to be a variance. One, I identify it to be a variance and tell them the, how that variance is to be advanced. And two, I tell them that by code, they can challenge my administrative decision that that's a variance. So that gives them some leeway, and that is code language. But that wouldn't apply here. This no. would be. No. But would you, you just check your established a fee for application for a waiver yet? Pardon me, sir? No. But we haven't established a fee for application. So that could be uh, a more nominal fee, <coughs> for, presumably, than for a variance. What is the variance right now, for example? Uh, Anybody know the total of dollars? dollars? Total application? Probably. Oh, that's it? That's all? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. You know, for the we houses they're just building here, if $200 yeah. is an issue, they probably shouldn't build the house. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's an nominal thing. All right, then you need a motion to... Uh, to I was going to suggest that, ask Marty to bring it all back to us again in written form before... If you're going to bring one back, bring this back. This should okay. be quick and easy. Well, what's, what's to bring back? You, you, you have this. And the question is whether they approve this as the uh, as part of the design guidelines. You already have approved a waiver concept, so I think the discussion here, without even coming up with new language, is do we approve this as part of your design guidelines, guidelines with the understanding that you already recommended a waiver process so people could get a waiver from this? Uh, I respectfully uh, say that there's more to it because I added a memo that. I thought they included the entablature. No, it's, like it's, it's, it's not in there. No, it's not. No. Oh, not no, no, oh, you're just. just <clears throat> can't they indicate whether they approve the entablature language and this, and then have, and then you're saying have Marty bring, coordinate the two of them and together? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, I I actually recommended that. Uh, Chapter 66 includes definition of entablature, and also in section 7100, mm -hmm. I'm going to say DRE, uh, it included the word entablature in that other. Yeah. So two part, two parts of the code has changed with that concept. So it's an administrative question in my mind, uh, and Mr. Right. Thrash, I yeah. leave it to you. You decide how you want to proceed. We can do it now, or we can do it in. I just want to see it, but I think you can do it now, so I would say let's move forward and do it now, and Marty bring it back to verify. Yep. Okay. So, Bob, you know enough about the promotion here, so. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so, quite but, honestly. But Bob, you're saying closer to Bill. <laughs> As it's, in, as it's in section 66 and also 70 100. Right. Correct. Okay. Right. I'll make that motion. Yeah, you got it. I'll second. Mr. Dougherty? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. And Chairman Lyon? Yes. Okay, one more. Oh, it should be easy. Mm -hmm. 
I have proposed some language that uh, Bill has incorporated within your package mm -hmm. to deal with situations where someone might want to paint a multicolored uh, door or uh, on a house. Mm -hmm. And I propose language which says that all exterior walls of the principal building and the accessory structure shall be of a uniform color. Normally you come and you approve a color of a house and you have primary colors and other colors that are on an approved list. So someone could take those colors and paint a purple line and an orange line and a green line and that sort of thing. And so that this was intended to make sure that there was one approved color throughout the, throughout the house to keep that kind of thing from happening. Bill has pointed out to me that recently uh, a house was approved where there, the colors and the texture were not uh, harmonious on the second floor mm -hmm. and on the first floor and that it looks very nice. So the question is, <clears throat> do you agree with this wording? They've, they've already approved this wording in the past, right? I mean, this hasn't been incorporated in the ordinance yet, but has this issue come to them yet? Yeah. No. No? We've it for you. Oh. Well, that's been <laughs> no. a long time. No, ago. that's not right. The election was, was coming up and the... I got you. Okay. But at any rate, uh, <laughs> this is intended to make sure that the color that you've approved is uniform throughout the, the face of the structure. Excluding the trip. And yes, excluding the trim, and it says trim colors shall be uniform in appearance for that portion right. of the trim element to which the approved colors apply. I think it's a good way of dealing with the, the situation, but I don't know specifically how you would deal with the example that Bill just talked about, where a house was approved, because this wasn't in effect, where a house was approved with a different color on the second, second floor. Um, I suppose you could deal with it the same way we dealt with the last issue. If this were in effect, and someone wanted to do something like just happened, mm -hmm. they could apply for a waiver because they think that it does fit in with the neighborhood. Uh, the house... Uh, That's fine. Mm -hmm. Where was the hall? Yeah, I, don't, I, to, to, I, I, I don't remember it. Up on that. It's like we have actually, like, on the ocean. Is that we may have two. Yeah, I don't know where you and, and it went before both boards. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on one because that's I'm sure of. Is down at uh, 1220, 1220 uh, North Ocean, and it would be the very first house on the north side yeah, as you enter. Oh, and it on is the right hand. A, on the right hand. It, it's a combination of I may not have the terms correctly. Batten board on the second story, smooth st stuff oh, on right. the first story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a darker color on the back board, and on this side. If you're going down, I hope you're going to the same house. Yeah, because you're if, if you come out of um, mm -hmm. Lakeview, the the house is directly ahead of you on the ocean. Okay. No. Is that right? And no. It could be that one or the, or the Gilman's. That that the one that's at Lakeview, I think, is is uh, Gilman's, oh, and it was. Mm -hmm. But both of them, either either house, was a architect that. Uh, served on the uh, ad hoc committee, well respected. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the problem, yeah, that's where we get into this, to this issue of you know somebody doing something that's that, that's, that's intentionally. I, I mean, I, again, I'm not an architect. I just, I just saying that for those two homes, the different colors and the different consistency of materials seem to add a lot. Marty, do you? Yeah, remember? I, I remember, and yeah, it was not the normal. But it worked. Very attractive. It was yeah. attractive. Yeah. Uh, it was consistent with other aspects of the design uh, manual. Yeah. Same architect. No. They were two, no. Different. two different. Two different. Okay. Yeah. okay. But by the way, by the way, I I heard observations from some people that you know, one of the maybe disadvantages of the design manual is you end up with a cookie cookie cutter. And so the fact that we had that kind of variation, because now it's, uh, it's resonating. I remember having that discussion. 
Um, and certainly when you drive down the road, it doesn't strike you. It's, it's something like, you know. Um, so again, back to the way I think it's, a, you know, it's, they encourage this, you know, adopt this, but still have the waivers. It's mm -hmm. an important well, dynamic. Well, I, sorry. Well, just, but, it's, but the thing is, is that to an applicant, having a waiver to do something, in other words, I think you have to look at it as a total design. You look at the house, does it work, does it not work? Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to put somebody through waiver is sort of saying, I might not get this through because I have to apply for a waiver, and that just sends up all these red flags. And that's where the waiver part of the of this. Well, is, the only is, other way to deal with it is to carve out some sort of an exception from this, and uh, yeah. Marty would have to come up with some language to, well, to do it with the exception. Well, yeah. This has an, an intended purpose. Right. And, uh, could you could, could you accomplish the same mm -hmm. thing as this, and, and yeah, an intended purpose driven by a, 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 an, an existing condition? But could you accomplish what it is we want to accomplish by adding um, first story or single story if it's a two story home uh, that sorry. could be part of it? But consistent on each need story. To be consistent on each story. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then, I'm not, I'm not sure. Then I, then all, you, all homes would be suitable for two different colors. I, I, yeah. I, I don't not necessarily, no. Yeah. I think yeah. again, it's a whole whole list that you got to look at. It is a package. You, know, you take an element. Oh my God, that's, that's, that's probably a better way to look at it. And so I, I think that. It's dangerous. Yeah, and you, you recommended waivers, and you believe in waivers, and that's why I'm coming in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand, again, it's that action. It's that table is taking a whole long to go through some hoops. But on the other hand, I'm afraid we might open the floodgates and something that might be. Yeah, look, there wouldn't be any delay. What do you think? Mm -hmm. It would just be well, a, to, a potential, potential delay. It, no. That's the. The. Uh, Bill could would tell them immediately, and then they would know by looking that immediately it doesn't meet the requirements. But because they know they're entitled to apply for a waiver, they could do that at the same time they come in to Bill for the for the review. And so they could they could come to the next meeting. It wouldn't be delayed from the Bill Bill can't, won't say you I can't pass this on. He can say I will pass this on, but you're going to have to apply for a waiver, which would mean maybe a two hundred dollar application. Well, it, yeah, but the problem is, is that, that by, by saying it's a waiver thing, you're saying to, the, to them it might not go through and, and then they don't have to go redo the design and then go through the process again. That's where, that's where but, it becomes in. But I gotta tell you, as difficult it is to deal with different architects, mm -hmm. it's a real pleasure to hear an architect who wants to argue his design and substantiate it with backup materials. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. And, and in discussions, you get to that point, bouncing these things off, you, you kind of sense the direction of staff. I, I, don't, I don't find that. So you get that indication you agree with that, Rita? Yeah. yeah, pretty much so, except that Mr. Kent is right is in saying that if they go for a waiver, to do it and it gets to the board and the waiver doesn't pass, there's no other way except to put it off to another meeting. Mm -hmm. no. But they're willing to, most of them would be willing to take that chance. Couldn't think. they on spot though, Rita, yes. at that meeting say, yeah. okay, we'll, we'll go along with the we'll guidelines. Go along with, the design with, the guidelines. with a condition. Well, if they said that, yeah. Mm. yeah. But mm. maybe the design would be such that to look right, they'd have to change something yeah, else. else. Well, that's, okay. that's true, but that's yeah. but but don't mean, you give them that's that option. part of the discussion. That's right. That, that they come to the meeting, as long as they come to that meeting knowing what their options are, you've applied for a way, be you successful oh. or not. And if you're not, on the fly, please consult your clients that's to say, right. this is your route to go. As that's long right. as they're fore, forewarned before they arrive. There's tons of hours of discussions yeah. before you even hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, could we also limit this, you know, if it's a one-story structure, I think it's a no-brainer. Couldn't we limit it, Skip, so we said it would only be empty? Do we want one-story structures with two different colors on them? No. no, no. We're so we really, it would only be, we could at least write into this that it would only be on, on a two-story building. 
that yeah, would but, one story. Yeah, but if you do that, no telling what you're going to get on the first story. See, if you're encouraging people to have a, a one story one color and the second story another color, as opposed to having a strict guideline, I mean, if there's only like two instances I understand where this has happened. And perhaps the waiver concept would be best as opposed to trying to write in okay. an exception. Right. Mm -hmm. So everything is yeah. uniform and they have to waiver for anything other than that. One story, two story, doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we need the money anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I think you can tell them. We've been in here when on the fly they'll say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we don't right. think the gray roof will be yeah, yeah. the white roof. They oh, yeah, yeah, right. So I think if they know that I'm the fly, I'm sorry. No, 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 you finish. You finish. No, I'm finished. Go ahead. And I think I mean, we tell our clients that in any board, there's a chance this might not go through and we're going to have to come back. Even if we all love the design, I think most clients, we try to make most clients know that that could happen. Palm Beach, it almost always happens. 90% yeah. <laughs> right now are getting deferred every month. Wow. And uh, so we try to let clients know that this, this could happen. You know. It's yeah. in their best interest. It's I, I, in everyone's I, best interest. I, yes. I think it's the general expectation on the part of the homeowner, probably because of your coaching, that it, and it's never a slam dunk. You, know, you just don't know. Yeah. And I, that's my experience here in this town, my experience in Southampton. In fact, I've never gotten approved the first time, and I thought I was doing mm -hmm. plain vanilla stuff. So, yeah. um, and that's not a criticism, it's just that's the way it works. And that, that tension is a good thing, um, yeah. because it ends up with where we, I think, want to be. It costs a little more money, things get delayed, but that's a trade-off. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any, anything else? Should we... Uh, so do you like this language for the possibility of a waiver? Yeah, should we adopt it? Okay. Malcolm? Okay, I'd like to... Uh, <laughs> read some um, you don't have to read the whole thing. No, thank you. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to um, make a motion that we accept the verbiage as provided by Attorney Skip Randall, uh in the documents that were forwarded to us prior to this meeting. I second. Mr. Dockery? Yes. Mr. Kent? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Karen Lyons? Yes. Uh, before everybody leaves, I, I want to make one co a couple of comments. One, I want to thank Mr. Thrasher. Uh, he, he provided some very helpful information and I appreciate you preparing all this. Peter, thank you as well. Um, and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Thank you. It's just very, it's yeah. very helpful. I, we need that. Yeah. You know, that, uh, and um, thank you to the board. With that, I'll propose that we conclude the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.